Hello again, everybody. Warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go through the Ross County game at the weekend there. Um, but we want to start with a wee bit of sad news. One of our regular followers of the channel, one of our, our regular commenters as well. Everybody like to chat to Michelle. Michelle Stewart has passed away. One of our regulars. Uh, condolences to the Stewart family. Condolences to Colin Stewart as well. Uh, just a bit of sad news for us there, John. I it was sad news. I read that. Uh, condolences to uh, Colin and his family. Michelle, lovely, lovely woman. Spoke to her a few times on uh, Messenger when she was winning her prizes and stuff. Uh, I was aware she wasn't keeping uh, good health, of course, but uh, that's a heartbreaker, that one. Uh, sorry, really sorry to hear that, Collins, if you're listening. Uh, we were both very fond of Michelle, and, uh, and she'll be sadly missed uh, on this podcast, and obviously by her a family and all that as well. Rest in peace, Michelle. You were a good woman. You gave us good laughs and all that, uh, good comments. Sadly missed, Sander. Really, really sad news. Uh, rest in peace, Michelle. Yeah, rest in peace, Michelle, and uh, our thoughts are with you, Collins, as well, and uh, the listeners and the viewers, our thoughts are with you as well, pal. Uh, she was Celtic crazy, when she joined Michelle, she was just Celtic crazy, so everything about her was Celtic, she loved Celtic, Collins is the same. Uh, so, uh, I'm sure all of our followers and listeners, you know, will leave a wee comment, a uh, wee condolence comment, so uh, we'd appreciate that if you could leave uh, Collins a wee message, folks. Um, all right, John, let's move on. Let's get into the, the football, John. Um, competition from last week, correct score and the goal scorer. Nobody got it right again, John. Only one person was close to it, and that was our Rosemary, another regular, John. Rosemary, she's never won any. I don't think this is, this is the first um, correct one she's got. She's got the correct score to one to Celtic, but she got the goal scorer wrong. Adam Eder, she says, so she didn't get the goal scorer right. So, um, let me think about it, John. Let me think about it. I might give Rosemary the prize anyway because nobody else got it right out of uh, maybe a couple of hundred entries, John. So, uh, she's done well. Aye, aye. She's done really well. Um, not, like the competition's correct score and the goal scorer. That's the competition, Xander. So, you've got to, uh, I think you've got to be firm. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, yes, if it was a couple that got it right... Um, but then I get the score out. I've never done it, John. But uh, I don't know. Let me think about it anyway. So well done, Rosemary. Anyway, getting the correct score. Like I said nobody predicted that. Um, not that I know of. Anyway, nobody predicted an arrow two one one for Celtic, John. We did mention it, and uh, when we were given our predictions, you know, we did say we would take an arrow two one last minute winner, and it more or less worked out like that. It worked out exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting a big performance from Celtic, but uh, look, all credit to Ross County, who I thought put up a terrific fight, unlike the one they put up against Sevco. Yeah, that's it. John. It was a different team that turned up against us, wasn't it? Uh, we'll get into the preview in a wee minute, John. Let's run through some housekeeping first. Hit that notification bell, folks. Just hit, hit that, and you'll get a wee notification when there's a new podcast or uh, any, anything that we put on, you'll get a no notification for that. So just hit that notification bell, hit the like button, and hit that subscribe button as well. The sub subscriptions are up and down just now, so if you can hit that subscribe button, that would be very much appreciated by both John and myself. Um, all right, John, let's leave that there. Now. Um, obviously, we're in the middle of an international break. Well, we're not in the middle of the start, sorry, of an international break. Absolute torture, can't stand them. Um, I know you like to follow Scotland and all that, John, but I just, I, I think we can be done with it, to be honest with you. I, I just want us to get right back into the next game, but we've got this international break. We just need to live with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run through some wee snippets of news before we get into the big preview then, John. So the ladies, obviously, they qualified for the Champions League last 16 group stage. So in their group, they've got Real Madrid, Chelsea, and they've got FC20, John. And they play FC20 on Tuesday night. So I'll be looking out for that one. I think that'll be a good game. The first game in the Champions League. It's at home. Uh, just good luck to the ladies there, John. Aye, good luck to them. That's all I can say. Aye, they did the hard work getting there. So aye, all the very best of luck to them. Uh, I'll be watching all the games with uh, great interest, especially the Chelsea one. Yeah, that'll be, it'll be good, John. And Real Madrid, you know, it's, it's just a brilliant group for the ladies to be in. It's, uh, but we'll all be watching that with interest, John, I think. Uh, if you want to watch that game, apparently you download the DAZN app. It's free, a free app. You just download that and you get all the ladies' football on that. Okay, John, let's move on then. Just before we get to the, uh, the, the, 
the preview, John, the big preview of the, of the game, and it was a good game, John. I enjoyed the game. It was it was really really good. Um, uh, we stay just before we get to it, we stay top of the league, John. Five points clear, the Rangers. Aberdeen getting the last minute winner against ten men Hearts, John. So it doesn't matter. We're still top of the league going into this international break. All right, still top of the league. That's all that matters. And uh, I've got to say, I think Aberdeen were very very fortunate, and I don't like Hearts as you know, but. I think Hearts uh, deserve to take the full three points out of that game. I thought Aberdeen were absolutely rank rotten until Hearts went down to 10 men. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, they were lucky, John. It was the 10 men that gave them the three points. So, you know, sometimes you need that wee bit of luck to stay in touch on it. So that they're still five points clear of Rangers as well. So that, they're doing well, Aberdeen, really. Are. But we need, to, we need to put a wee dent in our confidence, John, on the 19th, didn't we? So, um, but that's a way, way down the line, John. That's a way down the line. Uh, let's get into this big preview then, Johnny. This uh, sorry, post match. That's a preview post match. Sorry, the big game, John. Um, I enjoyed it, John. What did you think? I know it was nervy, and at, at one point it didn't look as though we were going to get the three points. But I sort of a uh, in the back of my head, I always thought, and I even said to my grandson, you know, it's still there for us if we want it. The three points are still there, John, and uh, the players delivered. Take their time. Yeah. Uh... By the way, the Aberdeen co-commentator on Aberdeen TV was brutal. It sounded like a guy that never watched a game of football before. Honestly, you might have heard them. I was like, what's this guy talking about? That's a foul, that's a foul. Guy just, I don't know, I'm not going to try and explain. I'm not talk here to talk about Aberdeen. But that's the worst co-commentary I've ever heard in my life. It honestly sounded like a guy that's never watched a game of football. And I don't know who it was, but honestly, Zandy, you might have heard this guy. Absolutely brutal. But anyway... Let's go yeah, I didn't, see, I didn't see any of it, John. I just heard the result coming through and I saw that Hearts were down to 10. So, you know, the, 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 the club TV channels are going to be biased, aren't they? So, you know, it's... Um, we had <laughs> we had Boyd, I remember, and everything. Everything was uh, against Celtic with Boyd, I remember, and Tom Boyd. So, yeah, Boyd was the same. But it was funny when he was doing that, John. You know, I thought, well, I miss Boyd on Celtic TV. Aye, Chris Boyd. Eh, Chris Boyd. <laughs> Tom Boyd. <laughs> yeah. Tom Aye, Boyd. Tom I, Boyd. Thought, I miss him, John. I, I thought it was hilarious. Tom Boyd's a legend. I loved him. Uh, no, he's a player. I, lo I loved him as a player as well, by the way. But on Celtic TV, I thought he was hilarious. Absolutely brilliant. But anyway, let's go on with the Celtic game. Aye, I thought Celtic yesterday, huffing and puffing in the first half, dominating possession. Uh, but I had a feeling that uh, in the first half, it felt like one of their games, that the goal was never going to come. It looked like one of their games they could have played to next week and no scored. That's just what it looked like in the first half. It did, John. It looks as though we were never going to score. And even in the second half, John, it looks as though we were never going to score. I was screaming for these substitutes and eventually we made the subs. Um, but in the eighth minute, John, we've got this tackle from this Campbell, the meatball boy. It studs John down the Achilles, John, uh, on Kuhn. And, and another shocker, yet another game, another tackle goes unpunished. Uh, I've put the wee freeze on, on the screen there, John. That's, that's another shocking tackle. That gets, gets, um, he gets away scot free, this guy, Campbell. And by the way, he had a few in the game, Campbell, on Celtic players. And he gets away scot free. That was two or three he had. Uh, I, uh, that was a bad one. Uh, I can't remember if he got a yellow card for that, but I think it. No, I think it. I think it was a yellow card, at the very least. That tackle. We've well, talked about these kind of tackles before on Celtic Plus. That was at least a yellow card, and like if he walked away with nothing, it's a scandalous decision. But uh, I don't think the boy's a dirty player. He didn't really seem to be a dirty player, but uh, if you want to see players getting away with fouls. Watch uh, Aberdeen against their uh, hearts. How many fouls Lauren Shanklin got, Shanklin got away with? Honestly, I'd, how he stayed on for 90 minutes is beyond me. Lauren Shanklin, mm -hmm. his performance against Aberdeen was ridiculous. No, it's, he's, for me, Shanklin's finished. You know, as a, no finish, but he's at the top, top level. I think he's done. I think he's going to, you're going to start seeing Shanklin going down uh, the levels, John, to be honest with you, down to the lower. Clubs like I don't know Ross County, like the, Rangers, the, the, the Championship Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> he's been liked by them, and he that's lowering the level. Isn't it? If you go to them, um, but I he has finished. How he won the Player of the Year last season, 
the Football Writers Player of the Year. It was beyond me. Honestly, you might have seen the fouls he was putting in in players and get he get one yellow card and he was still fouling after it and never get sent off. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Anyway, we're not here to talk about them. Yeah, no, no, John. It's, um, but um, there is a lot of fouls getting, you know, overlooked. Definitely getting overlooked. Um, we, we mention it in just about every game, and it's you're talking about tackles that could put players out for two to three weeks, John. So um, we've got to get more protection as far as I'm concerned. 18th minute, there was a shot by, is it Hale, the boy's name that plays up front that scored for them, John, scored the penalty. Hale, but then there was a shot by him, and it was saved by Schmeichel. So Ross County shown a bit of intent early on in the first half. Uh, then we have a couple of sort of easy chances missed during the 21st minute. Not easy, but, you know, you expect better. It's a header in the 21st minute from Scales. He heads it wide. I think he should have done better, the big man. But he heads it wide anyway from the corner. And then 10 minutes later, there's another one. Another header from Dyson. Also wide from an Alistair Johnson cross. John, it's uh, a wee bit wasteful. I think you can put these type of corners, headed corners, into half chances, you know, you swing in a corner and you get a head on it. You're always surrounded by three or four players. It's very hard to score direct from a corner unless you're standing yourself. So Yeah, the both, both occasions, John, the players were more or less themselves. I just think they should be doing better, you know, for professional Celtic players, you know, especially big scales, big defender, big strapping lads, you know, get you always get it on target. If the keeper saves it, the keeper saves it. Fair enough. You know, I just think we were a wee bit wasteful and we were looking for that first goal, weren't we? Aye, there was very little created in the first half. Nothing to very little. Absolutely. It was just a very, very bleak first half. It was very poor. It was poor, John. It was hard to watch, wasn't it? It was, you know, we're Celtic supporters through thick and thin, but we, we want to see, you know, something on the part. There was that Celtic offered absolutely nothing in that first half. And and, and you say, John, fair play to Ross County. They had two, sometimes three players surrounding. Any one of our players, any one time, you know, they were shutting us down rapidly. As I say, they were surrounding every single player that had the ball, two, three round at the, at the, on one player, John. It was uh, it was quite impressive, you know, they, were, they weren't against Celtic a second. Aye, they played well, played really well. Uh, like I say, it was a totally different Ross County to the one that Rangers played. Totally different, but uh, that's to be expected a wee bit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Um, we did say, John, on the, the preview that it was going to be close again. It was going to be stuffy. It's so hard to break them down. They're, they've always got this big, tall, strapping team as well, Ross County, haven't they? So, um, and they worked to it like that. Um, but let's get to these penalties. Not one, John, two. I mean, uh, he did come off his line, to be fair, didn't he? So, but he saved it well. Schmeichel, the first penalty. Um, and it was a strong wall penalty. There's no denying that's a penalty, John. Oh, it's a stone waller all day. If that was Celtic, and then if they never got that, you'd be uh, going on about it all year. But I'd like that's a stone wall as it comes. Liam Scales has stuck his arm out to stop the ball going into the box. Clear penalty. Good save, Schmeichel. He should know better. He should be standing behind his line before it's took. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a professional goalkeeper, a top, top goalkeeper. And that's uh, very amateur for a guy at his levels under coming off his line like that. Yeah, I thought that as well. You know, he's. You know, it was a terrible penalty. He didn't need to come off his line like that, John. He would have saved it anyway, I think. But he gets the retake, John, and he scores his goal. Uh, it's a nice finish, to be fair to him. But the celebration, John, you've said this a few times on post-match podcasts. You know, you go one nothing up, aye, you celebrate. Of course you do. But you don't go saluting the fans and su- shushing, uh, telling the Celtic fans to be quiet, putting your finger up to your lip to tell them to be quiet. Uh 50 second salutes to the Ross County fans. John, celebrate your goal, yeah, but the, the games, there's a long way to go in the game. You know, don't don't go on as if you've you've actually won the match. You know, keep those celebrations to when you win the match. Yeah, I don't want to bust your bubble, but he celebrated that salute to the Celtic fans and the Celtic fans in that section of the ground. You've got them behind the goals and you've got them kind of just over a quarter way up that stand on the touchline. And he ran right over the Celtic fans, told them to shush and continued that and ran up to the Celtic fans saluting. Exactly the same as that guy used to play for Sefco. What was his name again? The Canadian guy. You remember him? Used to salute all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're, I can't remember who it was. Um, but to me, it's um, celebrate once you've won the game. You know, 
you know, Lenny's doing it to the Celtic fans or the Ross County fans. It doesn't matter. You're celebrating as if you've won the game. Don't do it. Celtic players don't do it. Celtic players celebrate a goal. They go to the halfway line and they kick off again. You know, at the very end, when we got the winning goal, we're jumping ahead here, obviously. We celebrated because we knew the game was finished. That's the game finished. It's over. We're 1 2 1. So, uh, anyway, John, it's 1 0. They get two chances at this penalty as well. Two chances. And they finally scored the goal. So, second half, John kicks off. Um, that, that was a nice wee uh, chip for that boy, wasn't it, as well? Chip for about 40 yards out. Unlucky with that one, just a, a couple of feet over the bar, maybe about a yard over the bar. It was a good effort from this boy, Hale. Aye, that was a really good effort. I thought that was net bound all the way, that one. Uh, he's obviously a blue nose celebrating like that, by the way, against Celtic. Uh, I just can't go that. Like you say, it's just do you're celebrating when the game's finished or you've scored a late winner or something, but very, very early to be doing that against Celtic. It's a penalty. A very poor penalty as well. It just he just hammered it, hitting hope, and he's celebrating like he's won the World Cup. Uh, and the guy that he's copying was uh, Scott Arfield. Arfield, uh, you dear, oh dear. I mean, um, I think it's, I put, I put, I put on to, uh, Sky, um, Ian Crocker. He's uh, he's a Celtic supporter, but uh, it was it was laughable watching that because it was so long to go in the game, John. Fifty um, third minute. Shot from McGregor, he had his usual pot shot from outside the box, but this one was just wide. But he was unlucky there. Um, another foot, it would have been in the net. But uh, good effort for Callum John. At least he's he's um he's had a wee attempt to try to get us back into the game at this point. Aye, aye, decent enough effort. But I wasn't expecting a Callum McGregor special yesterday. Don't I wasn't it? That game was not set up for that type of goal. And uh, aye, he, but he's unlucky there, I suppose. Yeah, just wait, he drags it wide. Um, okay, John, we make the subs. This is what I was screaming for. Screaming for it. <laughs> Bernardo on angles off. We'll get to the one to ten individual scores very soon, folks. Kyogo off either. Oh, no, sorry. Kyogo on either off. And Luke McCowan, who, uh, who's impressing me, John, he came on for Hitati, didn't he? Um, and so we make the subs, and you see a difference right away. But, you know, we're beginning to actually attack the box a wee bit more. Um, we're a wee bit more dominant. Um, I know we were dominant throughout the game, but you know, we're, at least we were getting some chances at this point. And we finally get that uh, equaliser, John. And it's a bit of stramash into, inside the box. It's a shot. It's deflected. Shot from McGregor, deflected. Doesn't no matter. Comes off his thigh, into the net, past the keeper. A lot of relief at this point, John. One each. Aye. Uh, Alistair Johnson says he was trying to get out of the way of that shot. Luckily, he got out of the way in the right direction because <laughs> that shot was going no nowhere. That was going miles past the post. Um, mm. But Alistair Johnson, thankfully, was standing in that spot because if it wasn't for that, I don't think Celtic would ever have scored. Didn't look like it, did it? John? It really didn't. Um, but he got the goal and it was, it was a lot of relief. I was relieved because it never ever looked like, did you say, John? We didn't look like scoring, although we made the subs... Um, but once we got that equaliser, John, it was a different story then. We just pounded their goal, didn't we? Chance after chance, you know, the keeper saves over the bar a few times, you know, and then we finally get the, the winner like we spoke about, John, in the 88th minute. So 10 minutes or so after the equaliser, we get the winner, John, a minute to go. This will make a lot of Rangers supporters sick, wouldn't it, John? Because this was beautiful. What a finish from Nicholas Coon, John, outside the box, edge of the box. Curls it round the keeper. Keeper, no chance whatsoever. Once you saw that ball hitting the net, it was total relief, total joy. Coon runs into the supporters to celebrate. You know, that's when you celebrate, John, when the game's finished. Um, he runs into the supporters anyway, John, and I, I think he's been very lucky there not to get a second yellow. Aye, and Chris Boyd was uh, dying to tell us about that. He kept going on and on about it after the game. You know what I mean? What a total clown that guy is. Um, Sky need to get rid of him. They seriously need to get rid of him. Is he there just to annoy Celtic fans or something? With his uh, biased opinions? What an absolute joke that guy is. But Nicholas Coon's finish anyway. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. A typical Nicholas Coon type goal. It? He's got the skill. He's got the pace. And just bends it right into the bottom corner away for the keeper. Keeper doesn't even move. He just, after it goes in, it hits the net, he just falls backwards, which was I thought was quite funny. So no red for Kuhn anyway, John. So 
Um, we thank my lucky stars because there is still five minutes to go. Injury time after this, John. Isn't there? So we thank our lucky stars. There's no red. We're two one up. The final whistle goes. We've won the game, John. Three points in the bag. But it never ever looked like three points at any time in that game, did it? No, it did not. No, seven minutes injury time. By the way, where that came from, I've no idea. Yeah, yeah, it was a, yeah seven minutes. Would I say John five? Um, you know, but I mean, would you, let's not talk about the performance, right? Okay, there's maybe been a bit of a European hangover there, right? Maybe I don't know. We we were we both said four one four nothing uh, as a predictor for the score, John. But, um, but is this just purely a, a European hangover? There's nothing to worry about here, is there? I don't think there's anything to worry about, but uh, I, I do think it was a wee bit of a European hangover. I think uh, I think Ross County's obviously been watching Dortmund with a fast close down, and Celtic's found that extremely tough to break down. I think any team would have found a team playing like that tough to break down. Any team going there and Ross County playing like that, they wouldn't have got any space. They were very, very well organised defensively, Ross County. So I think I think we maybe discredit them a wee bit by saying Celtic were poor. I think it's a bit of both. I think Ross County were very good. I think we're good, John. Um, I mean, they did have shots and goals, John. They did have, they did have chances to score in the game as well. We also lost that... Uh, clean sheet record, John, didn't we? So that's gone. So but it doesn't matter about clean sheet clean sheet records, John. You did say that on the, the preview. It doesn't matter as long as we get the three points. But um I just thought it was it was a struggle, it was a battle. But is it the mark of champions, John, getting these three points over the line? Aye, it is. It certainly is. Um that's as we said that yesterday or the day before. That's all that matters. Get the three points in the bag. Don't care if it's one nil with a penalty or whatever. The three points are in the bag against a very, very hard fight in Ross County side. So for me, it's a good victory, Xander, and I'm delighted. But yeah, I was over the moon. Static, you know, I was static. You know, me and my wee grandson jumping for joy for a goal against Ross County. You know, so it's anyway. Uh, okay, John, that wraps it up. We'll have some individual. One to tens, then this will be quite interesting. I'd like to hear your take on this. What's your individual one to ten player scoring or player rankings, John? Cash was Michael six. I think he made a couple of good saves actually. Yes, the Casper. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with a six. Um, average performance throughout the whole team six for Casper, uh, Liam Scale six, uh, Trusty. I find it hard. I find it hard watching him playing in that position. I'm going to give him a five for Trusty. Alistair Johnston seven, although he passed the ball right to a Ross County player at one point. But other than that, he had a decent game. Uh, the boy on uh, left, Valley, I'll give him a six. Mm-hmm. Sent to the park, Callum McGregor six and a half. Engels four. Thought he was terrible. Um. Attacking. Sorry, John, sorry, John. Sorry, before you go any further, Engels, uh, he's, he's struggling to find his feet the new entity. You know, he, he was non existent. Nobody was existent in the Dortmund game, so he was non existent as well. And um, struggled against Ross County, John. So we just, we just need to give him a wee bit of time to settle in, I think. Aye, ah, exactly. I and his time's a good player, but he was bad yesterday and he was bad against Dortmund, so he gets a four. Uh, Real Hitati gets a five. Dyson Maeda doesn't he get half light. I thought he was quite poor, Xander. I'll give him a four as well. Adam Eda, I'll give him did absolutely nothing. Three and a half. Um, and on the right hand side, Nicholas Coon gets an eight. Mm, yeah, I've quickly run through mine. Casper, uh, I'll give him a seven. Save the penalty and a couple of saves, like you say, John. So he gets a seven from me. Liam Scales, six and a half. Uh, Trusty six and a half, Johnston seven, uh, Alex Valley seven, thought he was okay. Um, McGregor six and a half, Atati five, uh, Engels, you know, don't want to be too harsh on him, he's just in the door, isn't he? but he gets a five as well. Maida five and a half, um, Ida five, and like you, John, uh, Kuhn 
eight and a half. Yeah. Man of the match for me. Man of the match for me as well. I I couldn't agree more with that. Um, I just thought there was a lot of really, really poor performances. Uh, and I think Hitati, Engels, and Dyson Maeda and Adam Eder were the ones that was uh, the poor performers for me. And they all get subbed, and quite mm-hmm. rightly. Yeah, that's that, John. That's why you awarded them the sub then, actually, because Luke McCowan made a difference when he came on. John. I thought that boy was decent. Right, what a difference when Engels came off and McCowan came on, to be honest with you. We were winning balls in the middle of the park. There was passes to get made in the middle of the park. There was a bit of battle and spirit there, John, when Luke McCowan came on. And Bernardo for that. He played well as well when he came on. Uh, I'd like to see Luke McCowan getting more chances, to be honest with you, John. I saw with that. I, I like Luke McCowan. Half decent wee player, him. Bernardo made a difference as well, I think. James Forrest made a difference. Uh, and Kyogo never really got any service, to be honest with you, but uh, I think all the subs that came on did make a big difference. Injection of pace, Sander, mere direct, and I I just thought the boys made a big, big difference, and I'm glad that Brendan made these subs when he did, because if he persevered with that, I don't think we'd have got any goals. Mm, yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, again, John, I was screaming for the changes, I really was. Even before he made the changes, I was... I mean, everybody could see that Engels was struggling and uh, Tati was struggling, John. Even Big Eda, you know, never got a sniff in the game, did he? All right, John, let's park that. Okay, that's uh, that's the big uh, post-match um, done, John. That's the post-match done. Three points, essential, as I said at the start, in the middle of a international break now, John. I just can't, honestly, honestly. We're going to do it. We're just going to, we're going to be back on next weekend and we're going to do uh, the season so far, John, if you don't mind, if you're okay with that, we'll just do a season so far and we'll run through what's happened in the season so far. So that's what we're up to at the weekend, folks. Um, but um, I'm going to run through some score lines, John, and other things that's been happening, right? Um, we've already went through the Celtic ladies, haven't we, to uh, their, their fixtures in the Champions League. So we're looking forward to that. That's uh, starting Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, eight o'clock kickoff against... FC20, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, John. That'll be a good game. Good luck to the ladies. Um, biggest scoreline of the week. Uh, this is a wee regular feature we do. We'll just quickly touch on that. That was Folkestone 8, Ascot 1. So well done to Folkestone for getting the biggest scoreline of the week. Celtic B, John, we mentioned that the other day against Bone S. It finished Celtic B 3, Bone S 3. So a, a draw for the young lads there, John. Right, I'll do it. And Bruni Watch, John, quickly on Bruni Watch. He didn't get his win against Falkirk, did he? It finished um, Falkirk 2, Air United 0. So, uh, Air United still joint top of the league, but uh, Falkirk have the two games in hand, like you said, John. Aye, unlucky Bruni. That's all we can say. Nothing more to say than that. I just hope he can pick it up. Yeah, uh, we'll touch on Bruni Watch again at the weekend on his next fixture. Let's move on, let's move on. So, I have a wee look at the Champions League team's that we have in our group, John, um, or we have um, in, the, in the, the Champions League stage. For Borussia Dortmund, John, they were beat by Union Berlin. <laughs> so they must have put everything into the Celtic game because they were beat at the weekend against Union Berlin away from home. Union Berlin 2, Borussia Dortmund 1, John. So I think they used up all their energy against Celtic. Right, well done, Union Berlin. <laughs> John, sweet. Um, okay. Leipzig won another another one for Leipzig by the way. Leipzig won Heidenheim one. Uh, sorry, no, sorry. So Leipzig won no one for them against Heidenheim. Bruges won Union Berlin. Uh, sorry, Union, sorry. I don't know the full name of this team, just Union. So Bruges won Union one. I draw there for Bruges. Uh, Zagreb won. I know I'd won the for Zagreb as well, Sean. So all these Champions League teams are doing quite well. Aston Villa no Manchester United. No, so I draw for Aston Villa. And Young Boys, another defeat for Young Boys, John. They're not doing too well. Uh, a 1 0 defeat against Basel for Young Boys. So mixed fortunes there. But the one I wanted to talk about, John, was Atalanta. They're absolutely flying. A 5 0 win against Genoa at the weekend, John. So that's what we're up against next in the Champions League. Aye, that's it, isn't it? Uh... Bring it on. <laughs> Stay wait and see what happens. We'll talk about that when we get closer to it. But aye, that's uh, 
it's a potential banana skin for Celtic yet again, that one. Yeah, they're flying, John. They really are. They're a good team. We know that. We know they're a good team. But as you say, we'll talk about that in more depth closer to the time, John. But um, that's what's been happening. Just one more wee game I wanted to quickly mention. Nothing to do with Celtic. Nothing to do with anything, really. But uh, I like to see Linfield getting beat. Linfield 1, Glen Torren 3. So well done to Glen Torren. All right, John. That wraps it up. That's us. Um, I don't know if you want to quickly, quickly mention a couple of wee comments. Right, very quickly then. Rosemary says, great listening yet again. Thanks, Rosemary. Thanks, Rosemary. Cheers, pal. And the boys say... Well done, Rosemary, getting your correct score, but I'm not getting you the prize. I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to be strict. You're not getting the prize, Rosemary, but well done in getting the correct score. Sorry about that, folks. Ah, well, the the competition is correct score and one of the scorers correct. Uh, if, If you're not fulfilling the competition needs, you don't get the prize, Rosemary, but great effort and thanks for it. Yeah, thanks to everybody that entered, by the way. There was a lot of entries on Facebook and YouTube. It's good to see the YouTube entries picking up as well. Um, so keep the comments coming in with your guesses for the competition, folks. The next competition is going to be the next league game. So there's a week's break on the competition, folks. Right. Andy Boy says, this is what we need. Football phone-in, superb podcast. Well, we're not a football phone-in, Andy Boy, but yeah, thanks very much, mate. Yeah, we, we do our best, buddy. Thanks very much. Yeah, Andy likes the comments, and then well, fair play to Andy, and thanks for the comment. Cheers, cheers, buddy. Aye, well, that's as near as we get to a football phone, and Andy, we do read the comments. So, uh, it's a pity we don't have a spare phone, we have people phoning in, because that would be quite fun, actually. But uh, thanks, thanks for that, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Cheers, pal. And better than that, Clyde phone in anyway. Colin uh, Stewart says, Dyson for the score, unlucky, Colin. Unlucky Collins, yeah, yeah. Keep the guests coming in, pal. It's good to have you back on the channel as well. Um, obviously, you've got your personal issues over the last couple of months, uh, but it's good to have you back, pal. Absolutely. Good to see you, Collins. All the best, pal. Uh, Mad About Football says it's all about the league. Can I agree more? It's all about the league. 100%. Nothing else but the league. Uh, thanks for that. Roseanne says, by the way, guys, I left a text yesterday and it disappeared. I think YouTube's like that, Roseanne. Sometimes you leave a comment and it just vanishes. I don't know why that is. And we get accused uh deleting comments by somebody one time, Xander, if you remember, a long time ago. Nothing we would ever do. Yeah, that, was, and what, that, was just a, yeah. that was just a nut job, John. That was just a nut job. But the, the actual, I'm glad you brought that up, John, because um, lesbian girl, also had comments deleted, John. So I don't know what's happening with YouTube. I haven't got a clue. I don't know. We can only, um, if anybody sees that they, they left a comment and it's not there, please let us know. Just let us know. And um, and I can get in contact with YouTube to try and do something about it. But um, it happened to Lesbian Girl. It's happened to Roseanne. It's happened to other people, John. Um, so just let us know if it happens to you. I, it's a weird one that uh, comments just disappear and I've heard a lot of people going about that. It is a weird one, but I it does happen, Roseanne. I, we, we can't explain it. Um, but I, the, the idiot that class, it told us we were deleting these comments and got angry at the channel after sending them prizes and all that. Well, what about everybody else that's getting their comments deleted if you're still listening? Um, we don't delete people's comments. We would never do that unless it was a Rangers fan that left a sectarian comment or something. Uh, but yeah, other than that, other than that, we would never do that. Never, never, we've never done it once. Not once, as you say, unless it's in my bad language, it gets deleted automatically. Right. Anyway, thanks for that. Lisbon Girl says, I 100%. Your videos and promos are always class. Thanks for that, Lisbon Girl. Good, Lisbon Girl. And by the way, your, your other wee comment, I'm going to not get the time today, but we'll all read it out on the next podcast part, I promise you. And I'll also put it on Facebook as well. Hi, uh, thanks, Lisbon Girl. Your poems are brilliant. Yeah, outstanding. They're top class, top class, Lisbon Girl. Uh, anyway, thanks, Lisbon Girl. Peter Hendry was up next, and Peter says, John's right, we can't go toe-to-toe with teams like the calibre of Dortmund. Four went to the boys against Ross County and Kyoga to score. I'm lucky, pal. I'm lucky, Peter. It's good to have Peter on. He's had a, a couple of weeks away as well, so it's good to have the regulars returning as well, John. Uh, keep the comments coming in, Peter, buddy. Aye, thanks for that, Peter. Aye, aye. we can't go toe to with Dortmund. Something's got to change. I agree with that. Yeah, that will, that will change. Uh, Colin Stewart was up next, and Colin says he's he's going to be talking about his wife here, Xander. We mentioned that at the start, but for Collins, we'll read it out. Hi, Xander and John. I don't do Facebook. When Shirley won the lighter in frame, she contacted John 
sorry, Michelle contacted me a lot when she won prizes and stuff, uh, Collins. She was just a hell of a nice woman, and uh, she spoke very highly of you, of course. Um, and we both liked her, and we're very, very sad uh, that she's passed on. We really are, mate. It's a sore one for us as well, mate, but especially for you and your family. We can only offer our condolences again. But uh, he's, he's, he was talking about his best friend, Michelle, had passed away uh, on the 8th, sorry, the 30th of the 8th. Yeah. I know she would I know she would have taken 3 now. She really liked your take on the Celts. Hail, hail. Thanks very much for, the Collins, for that, Collins. That's brilliant, mate. And again, sincere condolences to you and the family, mate. Yeah, I remember talk, just just before you move on, John. I remember talking to Michelle, and she was talking to me about her, her health. You know, uh, she was she was a wee bit worried about it, um, but um, it's just it's, it's tragic, it really is, and I feel so sorry for Collins. Um, but rest in peace, Michelle. Our thoughts are with your family, pal. Just um, condolences to your entire family, to the the, the Stewart family. Um, and God bless everyone. He's uh, and our thoughts are with all of you at this moment. Absolutely, Xander, and all I can say is, regarding my beliefs, she's in a much better place now, Collins, so that's all I can say on that, mate. All the best to you in the, the future, buddy. Yeah, yeah, all the best, Collins, and keep in touch as well, pal. Keep the comments coming in. Thanks, Collins. Uh, Roseanne was up with a 3-0 to Celtic. Unlucky, Roseanne. Mm, unlucky, pal. Yeah, nobody got it right, apart from... Uh, Rosemary, <laughs> but she doesn't want. As you said, rules are rules, John. Rules are rules. Rules are rules. You used to be a lot softer than that, Xander, giving out prizes to people willy nilly for, uh, I don't know, for saying the podcast was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, John, it's um, no, it's fair play, you know. We can't really get away prizes for people that, that um, get half it right. You know, you've got to get the whole thing right. So that's why we made it a wee bit more difficult, John, by adding a correct scorer. So I'm lucky, pal. Just keep your, your entries coming in. Aye. Anyway, thanks for that. Next up was We Would Never Sell a Club, said, uh, just recovering from the shock last Tuesday against Dortmund, but made it all the sweeter when Sefco got gubbed at home to a mediocre Leon side 4-1, and Celtic will be back on the winning trail tomorrow with a victory over Ross County. Yeah. And bang on. Back on the trail, a victory. Doesn't matter how we done it. We done it. A lot of people upset about it. Rangers supporters saying how lucky we were. Who cares? Don't care what they think. We're top of the league. We're five points clear of them. And by the way, um, we didn't do our arrivals corner. But once they start playing some half decent teams, John, I'm not talking about anything special. I'm talking about your your Motherwells, your Aberdeens. You know, half decent teams away from home, John, because they've played five games, sorry, out of their last five games, four of them have been at home, which is unbelievable against teams like Ross County, St. Johnston, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're not doing that arrivals corner, but um, once they start playing some half-decent teams, you'll start seeing them drop some more points, John. I think so, I And like you say, all their games have been at home, so... Uh... I either do a few away games coming up, especially the one against against Aberdeen. That's going to be a tricky one for them. Um, but they've not played anybody apart from Celtic and uh, Leon, of, Leon, of course. Yeah, that's it, John. You look at the teams I've played, the very mediocre teams in Europe. Uh, Leon, I wouldn't say they're mediocre, but they're not great, are they? Let's be honest. They're no, they ain't no Barcelona, let's put it that way, John. But, uh, and then the team they played in the Champions League qualifier, can't remember who it was, the Ukrainian team. Um, Kiev was it, John? I think it was Kiev. Um, aye, aye. No, you know, mediocre teams, John. Um, basic teams, and then obviously Celtic beating them as well. They couldn't beat a very poor Hearts team either. So as soon as they come up against a half decent team, John, they'll struggle, and uh, and hope hopefully they'll get a couple of away games coming soon as well. Aye, well, we'll look forward to that anyway. That's all I can say. But I just don't think they've played anybody decent apart from Celtic and Leon. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Aye, aye, their time will come when they start getting defeats because the, the, they're a very poor team. Anyway, moving swiftly on, Xander, Udif says, brilliant late show yet again in Dingwall. Pat Chris Boyd raging about Coon celebrating with the fans. I have spoke about that. Uh, Connor Randall, disgusting behaviour, pretending he was headbutted by Coon, reminded me of the knuckle-dragger Kyle Lafferty getting big Charlie McGrew sent off. 
Yeah, he should have been booked for that. He wasn't even... Well, I think he was booked. I think both players got booked, actually. But that was disgraceful. That's a good comment, actually. This idiot trying to get Celtic players sent off. And then this other idiot wanting Celtic players sent off, Chris Boyd. You just said earlier, John, get him off Sky or anybody that's uh, no happy with it. Cancel your Sky subscription because that's the only way you're going to make a difference, honest to God. The guy is just an utter, utter knuckle dragger, John. Chris Boyd. Aye, <laughs> but uh, Nic- Nicholas Kuhn, he got sent out. It's a uh, yellow card for nothing there, by the way. He gets kicked out and stands up against the guy, and then the guy takes a fall like Kyle Lafferty. Do you remember that big Kyle Lafferty against uh, big Charlie Mulgrew? Never touched him, and the Charlie Mulgrew got sent off. Yeah, John, there's a video on the channel actually. Um, the worst dives in Scottish football history. Look back, it's still there, folks. Have a wee look at it. It's on the Celtic Forever podcast channel. You need to scroll a way, way, way down to about a year and a half ago, and it's there. And that's that's the actual the screen. The uh, the thumbnail for it is uh, Lafferty, with his pathetic dive. You know, I must just run through the blood with that club, John. Uh, I I look that uh, I can't remember the player's name. No, the guy that the Ross County captain yesterday. That's a disgraceful way for a captain to behave, pretending he's been headbutted. Uh, makes you sick to the stomach seeing stuff like that, Sander, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Nicholas couldn't get booked for it. I've no, I, no idea why. Maybe that's why the ref didn't book him for diving into the crowd, because I'm sure deep down the referee realised, look, Nicholas Coon's actually no done it, and he's just gave a yellow card to break it up kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Nicholas Kuhn deserved to be booked in that incident because he'd done absolutely nothing. No, John, I was surprised, to be honest with you, he didn't get the red. Said to me, Matthew, right away, so he jumped into the crowd, he's getting sent off. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that he stayed on the park, John. So yeah, 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 I was over the moon. Doesn't matter whether it was right, doesn't matter whether it was wrong, he stayed in the park and we won the game and that's all I was looking for. Uh, let's let's move swiftly on, and I totally agree with what you say. That's exactly what we're all looking for. Anyway, Peter Hendry, nice one, boys. Thanks again, Peter. Yes, Peter. Thanks, pal. Lisbon Girl says, good, great pod. Thanks for that, Lisbon Girl. Yeah, brilliant, Lisbon Girl. Keep in touch, pal. I'm just reading through these quick, Xander, running out of time. One club since 1888. Players will be angry with themselves. That's uh, regarding uh, the game against Dortmund, I believe. Yeah, I think the players would have been angry with us, Um And they, they came back and won the game. So um, yeah, it's, it's one game on the road to uh, hopefully Champions League recovery, John. Exactly, Xander. That's it. We've got to be rest now, so time to recover after that as well. So I think the rest has came at the right time for Celtic, to be honest with you, after that Dortmund game. Yeah, you know, John, that's a good point before you, before you continue. Uh, this international break for once has come at the right time for us, I think. I know all of our players are be in international duty, but um, Celtic as a club can stop, take a breather, John, and regroup when everybody comes back. Aye, exactly, aye. For once, we can be grateful of an international break. Yeah. Yeah. Bang. But move, moving swift, swiftly on, Xander, uh, Roseanne again says, McCoy wasn't he excited about Rangers. He was excited about Celtic. Or, or sorry, he was on a high about Celtic. And then she says, plonker. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney. Uh, yeah, he was, he was on a high about the, the, the 7 1 game, wasn't he? That's. Uh, and McCoyst, what a touch that is. That was, that was laughable. Um, you need to get it right. Get it right. It's, oh my God, what a touch that is. <laughs> A guy touched the bone and kicked it out of the park. Brilliant. Well done, McCoyst. Yeah, yeah. That, that's his standards, eh? That's it. Yeah, OBE. You know, OBE, McCoyst. Um, <laughs> the EBT, mastermind. <laughs> aye, aye. It's, they're just a joke, isn't they? Uh, yeah. uh, Hall of Fame players that's never won a trophy and all that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What a club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Right. Chinese scrapyard behind one of the goals. <laughs> aye, aye. Um, is there anything came out of that? Um, UEFA looking into the fireworks display. Uh, we'll find out on the fifth of November. <laughs> <laughs> aye, always good for a laugh. Right, 
Anyway, moving swiftly on about Sevco, uh, James Donham is up next. He says, the 7-1 rubbing from Dortmund will all be forgotten if Celtic make it into the last 16, and I reckon we will do just that. I think so as well, James. I think so. I think it's, uh, it's an eye-opener. It's a, it's a, it's a wake-up call for Celtic as a club and the players and the manager. And I think you'll see, I think you'll see different performances from here on in, starting with the Atalanta away. I'm not saying we're going to win the game, but I, I think you'll see a different Celtic. Going to have to be at their best to get anything in Atalanta, but we'll get to that when we get nearer the games. Under Colin Stewart was up next, and he says three 0 to Celtic. Unlucky Collins. Yeah, unlucky pal. He's uh, said nobody got it, so um, unlucky. Keep keep the guesses coming in. Aye, don't be any, don't be a stranger now, Collins. Keep coming back to the channel and leave your comments. We always love reading your comments, so so keep coming back, and we would appreciate that. Um, of course, yeah. Maybe get you on the podcast one day if you feel like talking. Yeah, anytime you want to come on, pal, just give us a wee message on Messenger, a wee private message. Uh, and if you want to come on, pal, that's not a problem. Absolutely. Uh, next up was Lisbon Girl. Uh, Lisbon Girl says, Baza White, the video edi- editing connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that was funny last week, wasn't it? Um, uh, my, my voice was all sexy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you like to think, anyway. <laughs> uh, cheers, Lisbon Girl. That was good. That was funny. Um, I, I think I sound more like Barry White than you, Xander. I think uh, I used to get called uh, Father Stone by, by somebody. Remember that? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the first few... Uh, it sounded like over the, the last year and a half, John hit me. So uh, I love it. I love it when people say you sound like this or that or the next thing. But the bad way you want to like that, that's funny. <laughs> Aye. I, luckily, it was me that called you that. Aye, well, that's it. <laughs> but I've, I've called you a few other things, right enough. Nah, that's it. Um, we've called each other plenty, but uh, that's allowed. Um, um, we can call each other whatever we want. Um, but no, it's just. A bit of fun <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I, most of the ninety nine percent of the time it is just fun, but um, I still like to hear what people are into. And nobody ever says that. Nobody ever comes on and says uh, what their favourite bands are and all that. I like to hear about the people on the podcast. So let us know in the comments what, what your favourite dinners are, your favourite bands, your favourite movies. We've asked that before, but we didn't get much feedback. But it's good to know what everybody's into. Yeah, I think there was a couple of people did leave a couple of wee bits and bobs, but uh, we want more. We want to know more what? about our regulars. We want to know more about, about the newcomers. Just uh, tell us anything you want about yourself in the comments and we'll read it out. I, th- I think it's good to get to know other people and it gives you a laugh and all that as well, Xander. You know, we like a good laugh, but uh, sometimes when you're talking about Celtic, you don't get a chance to have a good laugh unless it's uh, Sefco have had a bad result, you know. <laughs> And the laughing never stops when we talk about them. But anyway, John, um, uh, let, let's wrap it up. Is there any more comments? Sorry. Just the last one. Jamesy Boy Doran says 4 0 Celtic and Duracell Boy to score. Hard lines, James. Yeah, hard lines, everybody. Um, next competition is in a week's time, folks. We'll get that out nice and early next week because I think I, I, I was a wee bit late this week, John. I think it was the day before the game I, I released the competition. So I'll get that out nice nice and early next weekend when we do the season so far podcast next weekend. We'll not do anything in midweek unless something drastic happens in midweek. We'll do a podcast. But I think it's going to be very quiet on the Western front. Um, but hey, John, let's wrap up. Let's hear your final thoughts then before we go, buddy. Uh, well, I've not really got anything to say. Just uh, glad we go to over the line. A win's a win. as a win. As simple as that. It's, we got the, the three points in the bag. Aberdeen got their three points in their bag. Rangers got their three points in the bag. All stays the same at the top of the league, with Celtic sitting right at the top. And uh, come the 19th, I'm sure we'll uh, turn Aberdeen over and go three points in front. Yeah, I'm looking for a massive game, John. Looking forward to it so much. Aberdeen game at Celtic Park. Brilliant, can't wait. Well, well, if they play anything like the way they did yesterday, Celtic will turn them over. Not a problem, Xander. Yeah, I think the pressure will start getting to Aberdeen, you know, they're doing really well, don't get me wrong, but, um, and, they, and they could give us a game as well, so that's that's for another day, folks, that's for another day, let's wrap it up, 
Okay, condolences to Colin Stewart. My um, thoughts are with you, pal. Condolences. We've lost Michelle, brilliant contributor to the channel. Um, great friend of both John and myself. Miss her so much. Um, my thoughts are with you, you, Collins, and your family, pal. Take care of yourself. Um, hit that like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Turn on your notifications, folks. Leave a wee message for Collins in the comments if you don't mind. Um, and we'll catch you all next weekend, folks. Hail, hail for now. Ah, my sentiments exactly, Xander. Uh, she'll be well missed and uh, a good friend uh, gone, sadly. So uh, all the best, everybody, and leave your wee, uh, comments for Collins in the comments. See you next week, Xander. Yeah, see you next week, John. Hail, hail for now. Mm -hmm.